Um, inshallah, we will start the, the talk, the, well, the actual topic now. The talk will be de delivered by Sheikh Fadi Al-Qur Rahman. Uh, Sheikh Fadi al Rahman is the director of al Falah Dawa project. Uh, he was previous, previously the Imam of Stephanie Shardalan Mosque. Sheikh Fadi is currently working as a, an Imam and Khatib in London, London Central Mosque and Islamic Cultural Centre in Regent's Park. He has memorized the whole Quran at an early age, um, and lastly, he has graduated from Al Azhar University in Peru. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A better response would be appreciated. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wal-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen wal-salatu wal-salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Can we all send our salam and salutations to the noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by reading Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun after praising Allah and sending salam and salutations to the noble Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and he has no partners. And I also testify that the noble Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final messenger and slave of Allah, the Almighty. My dear brothers, respected elders, my dear sisters and uh, my beloved children. Uh, let me begin this um, talk with or by showing you a leaflet. Uh, this is a leaflet. It says, you are invited. Do you know what this leaflet is about? You are invited. Do, do you have any, any, can you guess or do you have any idea? Yes, go ahead, brother. Yeah, you can say it. Yeah. Yes, Christian Michel. That's right, yeah. So, this uh, leaflet actually came through uh, to my letterbox, um, I think, uh, day before yesterday, or probably uh, just before the 31st. And it said, you are invited. It came from a local church. Uh, first of all, uh, let me just confess that uh, people out there are much more active than us. At least they get their message through. And they send one of the leaflets to almost probably every one of you, <coughs> regardless of your faith and backgrounds and ethnicities, but the invitation is coming from the local churches. So it says here, please join us for the annual commemoration of the death of Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam. The date, time and location will be obviously Saturday, March the 31st, and it's one of the local churches in Bowl. So, you see, people are there doing much more work than Muslims. We Muslims, we believe that our faith is uh, much more solid, evident, and logical, yet we cannot get through the message to other people across the world. So, people are there much more active than us. We need to really think. And, <clears throat> and because of that uh, invitation, I would like to uh, highlight few words upon the, upon the day which is known as the uh, Good Friday. So the question arises, what makes Good Friday good? So obviously the Good Friday just went the last Friday. Do you know anybody that what makes Good Friday good? <laughs> That's Yom al Jum'ah for us, yes. It's very virtuous, very virtuous and very curious. Yes, yes, it's Yom al Jum'ah. But we don't call it Good Friday, do we? <laughs> but what makes Good Friday good in, uh, from the Christian perspective? Anybody knows? Any idea? No? Okay, <clears throat> so let me, let me just try and share this knowledge. What makes Good Friday good is that our brothers and sisters in Christianity, they believe that Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, translated that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he came to this world as a God. So he came as, as the son of God, so he's called incarnate. Why did he come? 
But why does he come as God? Because he could understand the feelings and problems and pains of human beings. Obviously they say, this is the logic, they say if the God is not like human beings, how can he understand the feelings of human beings? Or he say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allahul Huyu, he knows everything, all knowing, he doesn't need to be a human being. But that's what they say, he came as God in order to understand the problems of people and then he died and he sacrificed his life, he gave his soul for the sake of the humanity, especially the believers in Christianity. So they said he died and he took the sins of all the believers of Christian faith or believers in Christianity. So he came as a human, as a god and then he died and he sacrificed himself, he was crucified, he was killed as they say, he was killed and crucified and this is like expiation or, uh, or the forgiveness of the sins of whoever will come uh, as a Christian believer until the Day of Judgment. That's what they say. So they say Good Friday, that, that's the reason why they say that Good Friday is good. But obviously we think Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa Alison, he died, he was killed and he was crucified. Why would people celebrate on that day? Why would someone come and celebrate? So this is the reason why they celebrate because they say that our sins were forgiven. So meaning all you need to do is that you need to believe in Isa Alayhi Salaam and your sins are forgiven. You don't need to do five daily prayers, fasting in the month of Ramadan, going and you know, performing pilgrimage, all this hard work. You don't need to do all of those things. All you need to do is they believe and the Savior is for yours. And that's the, um, the faith obviously in, in, in Christendom. Um, now, what's our position as Muslims? What do we say about the Good Friday? What do we say about the uh, death of Isa alayhi salatu salam? We obviously first of all agree on many things with Christian people, with, with Christianity. Let's just mention a few mahal al ittifaq that's few points of agreements. So first of all, we believe that he's a mighty messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one of the ulil azm min al rusul, one of the great messengers of Allah and prophets of Allah, the Almighty. We believe that he was born miraculously. He, won, he was born miraculously, Isa alayhi salam, without any made intervention, meaning he was born without a father, which is rejected by many <coughs> bishops in England today. But we as Muslims, we believe, 1.7 billion Muslims, we believe that Isa alayhi salam was born miraculously. We also believe that Isa alayhi salam will perform many miracles in this world, like like uh, giving life back to dead people by the permission of Allah and also healing those who are born blind and leper. He gave them um, remedy and cure by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in this. We also believe that Isa alayhi salam was mentioned in the Noble Quran 25 times. As for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, he, is, he was mentioned only four times by name. We also understand that Isa alayhi salam's mother Maryam alayhi salam, a chapter, a whole entire chapter in the Noble Quran is dedicated for the mother of Isa alayhi salam, which you cannot find in the Bible. In the holy books of Christianity, you can never find this chapter entitled as Maryam. The only Muslim we have the name Maryam. But we disagree on certain issues as well. Mahal al So we have certain points of disagreements with Christianity. So we disagree. With the concept of God incarnate, meaning we don't believe that he's a begotten son of Allah. We don't believe that he was a begotten son of Allah. Rather, he's a slave and human being and a great messenger of Allah, the Almighty. And this is our love for him. And also, we do not believe in the concept of Trinity. So, the Christian brothers and sisters, they're saying that, you know, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But there are not three gods, but there's only one God. Right? We also disagree quite respectfully with them. And we also disagree with the concept of crucifixion. So, and that is the, uh, the Good Friday, you know, they say. So Jesus, peace be upon him, was crucified, killed and crucified. He was, he was killed on the cross and he was killed by the Jews of that time. Now, uh, Abu al Kirim it makes a, a clear instruction. It gives us clear guidelines on that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nisa, in verse 157, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa qawlihim inna qatalna al-Masiha Isa ibn Maryam Rasul Allah wa ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu wa lakin shubbihalahum They say, the Jews 
the Jews of that time they boasted by saying, Inna qatalna al-Masih Isa ibn Maryam wa Rasulullah. We are the one who killed, who, who, who crucified and who killed Isa alayhi salam. Jesus peace be upon him. Wa qawlihum inna qatalna al-Masih Isa ibn Maryam wa Rasulullah. And this is the reason why Christians, they used to kill Jews in every Easter. Because they used to hear, they're the Christ killer, they used to say. But obviously that stopped in recent time. But back in the days, they used to kill Jews every Easter time, the Christians. And um, because the Jews, they posted by saying, of that time, they killed Isa alayhi salam. وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عَيْسَ بِنَا مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And then the Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلُوا They neither killed, وَمَا صَلَبُوا No crucified. So they didn't, they didn't put on the cross, they didn't put Isa alayhi salam on the cross. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ But another man, who came in the form of Isa alayhi salatu was salam and he took the form of Isa alayhi salatu was salam and he is the one who was crucified, not Isa alayhi salam. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِنْ So there was اختلاف and doubts amongst the Christians and some Jews at that time whether Isa alayhi salam was killed or not. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِنْ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ They don't have any solid knowledge. إِنَّ اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنْ Except the guesswork. They were just guessing. They were thinking, assuming that this is Isa alayhi salam. وَلَكِنْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِنْ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنْ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا They did not kill and crucify Isa alayhi salam. And we believe that this doesn't go with the maqam and the status of this great, mighty messenger of Allah the Almighty. It doesn't go with him that he is crucified and is killed. We believe that he was raised by Allah. Allah raised Isa alayhi salatu salam. So the way obviously the incident took place, Isa alayhi salam was in his house. He was sitting with his disciples, two of his disciples, students. And the, the Jews, they came and they were about to attack Isa alayhi salam. And at that time, Isa alayhi salam asked one of his disciples to take whether uh, he, he would be happy to be in the place of Isa alayhi salam. So one of them, he agreed to do that. And he took the form by the will of Allah. Allah gave him the form of Isa alayhi salam. And he came in the place of Isa alayhi salam. And Isa alayhi salam was raised to the heaven, to the sky by Allah. And he would come back, inshallah, before Yawm al-Qiyamah in order to guide the mankind. Not as a prophet. He would come to this world as a leader, as a righteous slave of Allah in order to guide the mankind to the right path. And this is our stance on, with regards to the Good Friday. And this is not to condemn or to make fun out of anybody or any faith. This is just merely uh, clarifying the Muslim position on Good Friday. Um, so, and then let's just come to our actual topic and that is April Fool. So we said here in uh, on the topic, it says, what is April Fool's Day? Right. I need some help from the audience here. Uh, brother, this, this help me. Like, do you know what, April's full, what is the April Fool's Day? Anybody uh, can help me with this? <coughs> do you have knowledge? Yes, brother? Go ahead. I have some knowledge. Uh, you go to that and you make nice. Yeah, okay. And you fool people. To fool people, right? Okay. And one of the basic rules that was the standard of the day. Right, okay. We'll come to that point later. Okay. This is one of the main points to assumption. Mm -hmm. And to lie and joke about. Yes, just mainly cracking jokes, hoaxes, and making fun and fun out of people. And sometimes they can be really serious. They're practical jokes, really. They can be very damaging as well at times. I have one of the stories. Anybody else, brother? April full day, obviously, the first of April. So um, now here it says April Fool's Day is an annual celebration in some European and Western countries commemorated on April 1st by playing practical jokes and spreading hoaxes. And of course you know that this is more like playing jokes and making fun of people. And they say that this is just a, a day dedicated for people to make laugh and fun so they feel happy and this is good for health. Some people say, you know, laughing is good for your health because it releases tension and anxiety and also this is good for the hearts. Obviously this is a scientific explanation. And so based on that, it's a good 
it's a good idea to set a day or, uh, or select one day in a year to make some fun and jokes and so that we are happy. This is the idea. Now, <clears throat> some people are saying, like as the brother mentioned earlier, that it relates to the decline of Muslims in Spain. When we look at the um, history of information, we don't actually find solid information to suggest that. There are obviously uh, uh, conversations, there are gossip, or there are people who are talking and saying these kind of things. But I have looked into many uh, reliable websites. It doesn't say actually anywhere that it's connected to the decline of the Muslim in Spain. And if it's not, then there's no, re there's no reason, there's no need for us to actually connect it if we don't find any solid evidence to, to relate to the decline of Muslims. And I don't see any reason. So we, we leave that aside. But even those who celebrate or those who actually observe that day, they can't find any solid proofs or they can't find a, a, any a, any proper information uh, on where and how the April Fool started because they can't conclude with any solid information. And that's if you study and if you look into the website, the internet, online, you can't find, find everyone's different opinions amongst the historians about April Fool's Day. But one of the most or the closest opinion or the most common opinion you'll find in that day is about the French. So some years, uh, centuries ago, uh, the first of April was the first or the beginning of the year in France. One of the things he decided to take it back to the first of January. So people, obviously, many people didn't know. So the people who didn't know, they kind of is the beginning of the year, so they did like, they planned their, their new year, and they did many things, many activities and they were made full out of that day, obviously, because it wasn't the first the beginning of the year. And that's one of the most common uh, opinion on the origin of April Fool's Day. But now, this is just history, and there's not any solid information on how and where it actually began, but just uh, merely uh, different opinions amongst historians. And also, we cannot find enough information to relate the incident with the history of Spain or the Muslim uh, the decline or the fall of Muslim Spain. But generally people are making jokes and fun and we have, as Muslims, have a tendency of following other people. Uh, my question, I have a question for everybody. Uh, we tend to follow everyone, but do others follow us? We, many of us, we follow the occasions of other people when it comes to Christmas and, and obviously other occasions. Of, of the people of other uh, faith and backgrounds, but do anybody, does anyone else really follow us? Our occasions. Have you seen anybody celebrating the Eid Day, non Muslims? We don't we hardly see anybody. Um, you probably get one or two people that fast and then not the remember that. Because probably you are, or you know, as in you as a friend, you used to fast with things. Okay, so have you found anybody like fasting like non Muslims? Yeah, they try and fast. At the same time as you see how it is and okay, okay, yeah. So that's just like a trial, like how to how Muslims, you know, how they do it. Okay, yeah. But uh, as, as as general, like you know, as as nation, as people, like we don't see many people are really following the occasions of Muslims in the Western world, like Eid celebration and one well, and, and other Muslim occasions. But we, as Muslims, we have the, obviously a huge complex that we follow other people. We tend to follow the tradition of other people. Uh, but uh, let's just try to understand what does Islam say about making jokes? What are the guidelines of Islam on making jokes? First of all, did Prophet ﷺ, did he make any joke? Did he make uh, anybody laugh or did he make any joke? Yeah. 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 Yes, okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's good. Any other answer? Prophet ﷺ, he made, uh, sometimes he did actually make people laugh. And one of the famous stories that happened, uh, an elderly lady, Imra'a Ajuz, she came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said, and that's on the authority of Hassan Radiallahu Anhu, that she told and she asked Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, open for of Allah, make dua for me so that I can enter into Jannah, heaven. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you're old, you can't go to Jannah. You're not allowed to go to Jannah because you're too old. The lady became very worried and she started crying and she was, she, she was, she returned. Uh, you know, she, and she, while she was returning, she was crying. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, instructed Hassan Bilalano to go and tell her, uh, go and tell her, Hassan, go and tell her that when she goes to Jannah, she won't be old. 
She will be old, she will be young. She will be young while she's entering into Jannah. So she will, she will know everybody will become young when they enter into Jannah. So Prophet Sallallahu he instructed Hassan Abiyah to go and tell her that she will not remain elderly while she will be entering into Jannah. So that's just a, like a, a small, uh, obviously, uh, you know, love and joke by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And there are other incidents that happen amongst the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, either companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, but there are guidelines when we make jokes. Uh, first of all, we cannot make lies. We cannot be liars while uh, joking. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said in the hadith, وَيْلٌ لِلَّذِي وَيْلٌ لِلَّذِي يُحَدِّثُ فَيَكْذِبُ Woe to the one, woe to the one, destruction to the one who speaks and makes lie in order to make لِيُضْحِكَ بِهِ النَّاسِ in order to make other people laugh. So, why is the lady who had this fact? The book and woe to the one who makes lie uh, in order to make other people laugh. And then Prophet Salah said, Why you know, why you know, woe to him and woe to him. You can see, like, this is the dua. Uh, why is an expression, is a word in, in the Quran. Can you find why you live for why you live for why you live for why So, woe is a dua of destruction. Or to the one who makes lie in order to make other people laugh. You see, Islam doesn't prohibit making jokes and laughing. Islam doesn't prohibit. Islam doesn't prohibit uh, enjoying, you know, with, but within the parameter of Islam and, and within the instruction of Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we have to still remain within the uh, instruction of Quran and Sunnah uh, of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so, Prophet is saying, we. Why للذي يحدث فيكذب Or to the one who uh, speaks and makes fun in order to make other people laugh. And then you find also Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith in terms of being truthful and in terms of lying. So he said in the hadith uh, on the third of uh, Anas bin Malik and رضي الله عنه and he narrated from Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said عليكم بالسر that you must be truthful. You must be speaking the truth. Because the truthfulness leads people to the righteousness. And the righteousness, righteousness leads people to Jannah, the heaven. And then it's Be aware of lying. Be careful of lying. Because the lying leads people to corruption. And corruption leads people to the fire of hell. So we cannot lie even when we are making jokes and making fun and we are obviously uh, having laugh uh, amongst ourselves. But we are allowed to laugh and obviously have fun but in a moderation, in the, in, in, on the level of moderation. We cannot obviously do anything excessive because Prophet Sallallahu also said in the hadith that uh, you need to reduce your laughing because uh, excessive laughing can really kill the heart. Uh, excessive laughing can obviously kill the hearts of human beings. But again, this laughing uh, is uh, is far from the remembrance of Allah and is far from the um, from the uh, connection and the presence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But we are allowed to do that moderately. Um, when we come to make jokes, there are certain guidelines. Number one, we must not hurt the feeling of anybody. Like sometimes we're making jokes, excessive jokes. And you might be in a very good condition, state of mind, but other person is not ready to take your jokes. And this can be damaging for that person. It can be very bad. It can be hurtful. So when we make jokes, again, we have to be careful that whether we are hurting the feeling of other people, that's very, very important. Because sometimes this can be sinful if you're hurting uh, either, if you're hurting the Muslims and, and human beings. Very important point, that we must not hurt the feeling of other people when we make the jokes. Number two, we must not be taking the mic. We must not make mockery out of people. So we must not say, this is the, you know, you're a fat man, you're a tall man, you're a short man, you're a midget, and fat. You know, we have these names for people. But if these names are actually hurting the feelings of people, they're prohibited. 
and then we say freshy, and we call different names. We also say like some people say paki, and you know, uh, and then we give names to different people, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Noble Quran, "Wala tanabazu bil alqaa," that do not call bad names, you know, on people. Do not call people by bad names, by hurtful names. But amongst our people, especially like when we come from our background, people from the subcontinent, we have a, we don't even think it's, it's sinful. We easily call people by name. So this is very, you know, it's about Dogu, Hola Mbogu, Hufaklam, doesn't it? We give different names like, to people. This is very bad and it's haram. And we say, like, we also like change the name of the people. So if the person is happy with that chain, then there's no any problem. But if the person is not happy with this chain and you're calling a different name to the person, <coughs> right? And then we have, even we take the meek out of the religious people, so Mullah. This can, some, sometimes you think that this is normal, sometimes you might think it's normal, it's just a normal thing, but this can, you may not uh, follow Islam fully, properly, that's not a problem, but taking mockery and mick out of the religious people can actually take you out of the fold of Islam. Like for instance, you don't have the beard, you can't keep the beard, that's fair enough, you're not following a, a strong sunnah of Rasulullah but if someone comes and takes the meek out of, of, of the beard, then he can actually be out of the fall of Islam. So we have to be very careful when we make comments about people, the religious people. So uh, we give a lot of bad names. When it, and Tanabas bin al qaab is very common amongst in our Muslim community. We give bad names and we call people with different characteristics. The people may, be, may, may not like it. We have to be very careful. So, Tanawus bil al-Qab is prohibited. It's not like something that disliked or anything. No, it's not allowed. We're not allowed to do so. So, we must not uh, take meat out of people. And then also, it must not be racist remarks. Sometimes people actually, through jokes, they give the message. So, uh, I was just in the event of Imam Surah al yesterday, and he was saying uh, that um, he used to go and collect newspaper from a, a newspaper store in New York City. And every time he used to go, as he's saying, that, uh, every time over the years he used to go and buy the newspapers in early morning. So there was a lady, uh, she used to sell the newspaper, she's an American lady, and uh, she asked him once, like, where are you from? So he said, like, I'm from America. So then uh, she said, no, 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 where are you from actually? He said, America. So they said, like, no, no, where, where are your parents from? America, he said. <laughs> and then uh, and then she said, but, but you have this dress, like, you know, you've got beard and you go, what are these? Like, you know, you know, what are these like? Why are you wearing these things? He said, well, I'm a Muslim. I go, oh, terrorism. <laughs> so the lady was laughing, but, but obviously there is a message behind, behind the joke. So people, some people really believe in, in, in these kind of things because they've been brainwashed by the media and, and some opportunist people. They've been brainwashed every day. So sometimes jokes can actually give message, but you say, oh, I'm just joking. But this can be damaging and, and, and it can be really bad for people. So we cannot make racist remarks. Sometimes we make, you know, we have this tendency again, like calling people by the colors. Now, if somebody's happy with that, there's no problem. Um, I remember um, one scholar, he was, um, he was saying uh, that, you know, uh, he was in America and uh, he said, like, you know, I met the black community. So one of the brothers from the black community, he said, uh, well, you're calling me black, this is racist. So then he said, like, no, um, somebody in New York City, one of the scholars, and he's a reverse scholar, he confirmed that we don't mind being called black Muslims. It's not a problem. So then he was saying that if somebody's happy, with the way they are, and they don't mind, then that's no problem. It's just an identity. Some of us will mind uh, being called like we're Bengalis, Pakistanis, Somalians, Nigerians. We say, you know, if you ask the brother, where are you from? They would say, I'm from the earth of Allah, I'm from the land of Allah. It's like it's, it's prohibited, or it's not a good thing to say where you're from. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent us to different tribes and nations and, na and, and ethnicities and background. This is for the identity purpose. And we, we normally speak about this. So He said, very well sent you to different nations and tribes so that you may recognize one another. Not because you're superior than one another. Not because 
you look in a specific way, you have a color, you've got, you, you belong to a specific race, and, and this is the reason why you're superior. No, لِتَعَارَفُ So you know one another, you recognize one another. It's fine to be, to identify yourself by saying you're from that land, from that, birth, from that country, from that city. As long as you don't have the feeling that you're better than others just because of your identity. <coughs> because Allah the Almighty gives us the parameter, He gives the measurement. He says, in the akramakum and the line at Qaqum, the best one of you and the most honorable is uh, the one, or the most honorable one amongst you is the one who is best in the sight of Allah, who is most dutiful to Allah and best to her fellow human beings. This is what actually makes us whether we're good or bad, not our identity. So when we again make jokes, we have to be very careful that they're not racist remarks, we don't hurt the feelings of anybody. And then we, all, of course, we cannot make, uh, we cannot terrify people. I've heard some really funny stories that apparently people divorced on that day. And some Muslims take part in the April, the, the April Fool's Day. And they divorced their wife because they were joking, but it turned out to be serious. Because, you know, there's no, there's no joke in divorce. You know that there's no there's jokes in divorce. If someone, even by joking, if someone tells his wife, you know, that she, he divorced his wife, that, that counts. It is accepted. So some people, some Muslims, they divorced their wife on that day. I said, like, I'm sorry, I was joking. And then they went to the scholar, and the scholar said, no, sorry, it's not it. <laughs> way back. You have divorced your wife, there's no joking in, in divorce. So people divorced, people did like weird and very awful things in the name of that day. Um, so again, terrifying is another thing, that you make scared of people. What does Islam say about that? You make scared of people. Now, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gives an instruction. Uncle Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he was a prophet to the whole entire mankind. Did you know this? He's a prophet to the whole entire mankind. And his religion is the most comprehensive religion. You want to know anything about the life, the world, the science, your, whatever you are, your, your concern, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us answer. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has guidelines for us. It's the most comprehensive religion. And this is the, real, this is the reason why this religion will sustain until the Yom Al-Qiyamah, until the last day, inshallah. And it's the most diverse religion, it's the most, uh, it's the most international religion that you, ever you can find. So, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he tells us, and uh, there is a hadith uh, mentioned uh, in the book of hadith, in the authority of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu said, we were on a journey with Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa left in order to relieve, uh, obviously, himself. Then, while he was away, we saw a bird, a bird with two baby birds, Humma. And um, we started to play with the birds. So we took the baby birds away from the mother bird. And the mother bird came and it started to pick its, its wings over on the, on, the, on, the, on the floor. Why? Because looking for the baby birds. And the mother bird cannot find the baby birds. And Sahaba, obviously, they just like you know, making <coughs> some, some, some laugh amongst themselves. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saw the mother bird is beating its wings on earth in search of the baby birds. So then Prophet Sallallahu said, Man fajara hawihi bi waladiha. Who terrified, who terrorized the bird by taking the baby birds, birds away? Who done that? Man fajara hawihi bi waladiha. And then he instantly said, but then you see the character of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't like exposing anybody. He never said, okay, who, who? Like you have to say who? Like he never said that. He didn't want, he didn't want to expose anybody. And that's the character, the, the highest, the most uh, high-ranking character of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would never uh, expose anybody in front of people in public. Which many of us like, and we have, we love and enjoy doing this. So then he instantly uh, directed by saying, Ruddu waladaha ilayha. Return that baby bird to the mother bird instantly. Return it. Because obviously the bird was in tension, distressed by, uh, by not having the baby birds. Now you can see this is the teaching of Prophet. Sallallahu if it is the teaching with the animal, the world of animals, the birds, how about the human beings? How can you terrify? How can you terrorize? How can you make like human beings scared? This is how prohibited. If this is the instruction of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then you listen, he proceeds. Abdullah al-Masrud, he says that 
the, when we were on journey, what we did, we, um, we found uh, a mountain of, of ants and we burned them. The ants, you know the ants, obviously, he burned, they burned them. Professor Allah said, he saw it, he said, Mam who burned them? Who burned these ants? And some people are obviously sensitive to ants, and especially some of our sisters, they are scared. So, Man Harraqa Hadi, Unna Nahi, Sahaba, although they said we did. And then, it is not permitted for anybody to punish anyone by with fire except the creator of the fire. Nobody is allowed to punish anything with fire except the creator of the fire. He has the right to, do that, to punish anybody with the fire, but not anybody else. Now you can see this is the kindness and mercy and the character of our beloved Muhammad, peace be upon him, and this is the kindness and mercy that he's teaching his beloved companions with regards and in dealing and in, in, in conducting with the world of animals, the, 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 the world of birds and ants and insects and creatures of Allah Almighty, let alone the human beings. So, indeed, verily, this is the religion of mercy, and the Prophet Muhammad is the really Rahmatul Alameen. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ As Allah the Almighty, He said, I have not sent you, Prophet Muhammad, except as a mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Except as a mercy. Now, um, just to conclude, um, like, I want to also say that, um, so these are the guidelines that we have when we come to make jokes and fun. Now, this April Fool Day is just a normal day for us as Muslims. We have nothing, like, we, we don't do anything on that day. As a Muslim, there's nothing that we have, we should do. Because it doesn't say, it's not coming from the Quran or Sunnah or Hadith. So therefore, yeah, we have nothing uh, concerning about that day. Uh, but we, uh, we just mentioned the general guidelines on how to make jokes and how to make love amongst uh, ourselves, within ourselves, within the friends, <coughs> circles of friends and family members, and obviously, uh, our fellow colleagues and other people in society. Um, but again, here, uh, Professor Larson says in a hadith that there will be a time when the Muslims would be in a situation when they would follow others spam by spam and shibra by shibra, dhira by dhira. So he said, let's take a look at the book of the hadith, the book of the Muslim, Allah, that Abi Sa'id al Khudri said, that there will be a time that Muslims, you guys, that you will follow the people before you, the people who came before you, shibr and shibr, like span by span, hand by hand, inch by inch, even if they went into the whole, the whole of the lizard, even if they went into the whole of lizard, you would go into the whole of lizard as well. That's how much they follow the people before you. And this will be a time they will follow in love for other people. <coughs> Then, the, then they, the companions, uh, peace people, uh, may Allah be pleased with them, said, uh, are you talking about the Jews and Christians? Then Prophet said, um, قَالَ فَمَنْ So who else, uh, if, if they're not uh, the Jews and Christians? So uh, we have mentioned earlier, the have a tendency of following other people, but others hardly follow the occasion of Muslims. And we can easily understand that, that we have in future complex we have the right belief, right faith, right theology, right Quran, most authentic book, the most genuine book, the best prophet, the, the, the most influential prophet in the history of mankind, according to even many non-Muslims. We have all of those things, but yet we feel a lot of ourselves. We feel that we not, don't have enough information, uh, and we love just mixing, obviously not mixing, but we love imitating other people. Um, by saying all of this thing, I don't mean to disrespect or even condemn or even criticize uh, anybody from any other faith because we as Muslims, we respect everybody. Islam is a religion of coexistence. And you know, from the early stage of Islam, Muslims live with the people of other faiths. The first group of Muslims who migrated, do you know who are they? Do you know who, which group migrated? The first group of people migrated from Mecca and Karama. And Muhajirun, yes? Where did they migrate to? Where, where did they go to? 
not Yathrib, that's that was after Medina, that was after. But the, there is another group who migrated at, at the time of Mecca. They migrated to Ethiopia, Habasha, Ethiopia. And that time, obviously, the king of Ethiopia was Najashu, and he wasn't a Muslim. But Muslims, when they went to Ethiopia, they lived peacefully with the people of other faiths. <coughs> and Najashu was inspired. And he was amazed by Muslims, and some of them said he accepted Islam in Najasi. And uh, so Muslims lived with people of other uh, religions from the early stage of Islam. And Islam was a dominant religion for about 13 centuries, you all know this, for about 13 centuries and until the decline of Ottoman Empire in Turkey. And Muslims always look after and took care of the prayer places of people of other faiths. If you don't believe me, you can go and visit uh, countries like Egypt. Turkey and Morocco and Muslim world, you'll find ancient churches, synagogues, temples are well preserved and protected by Muslims throughout history. You can find the first mosque that ever was built in Cairo is right in front of uh, at, at one of the ancient churches. You go to Masjid Ahmed Mosque in Cairo, the first mosque in Cairo, in the state, it's, the most, it's the biggest mosque, grand mosque in Cairo. And this is right in front of a, a church. And the church and more side by side throughout the history, and nobody touched upon the church up until today. And you find this in Sinai and other places. And also the temples. <coughs> Muslims ruled India for about over a thousand years, but the temples and Hindu people were protected by Muslims. So Islam is a religion of consistence, it always protected the rights of other people. We are respectful towards other people, but we would like to also understand the difference between obviously Muslims and others. This is important. We accept the issue of integration, but we also disagree with the issue of compromising the faith and religion in the name of integration. Um, so we have to bear all of those things in mind, but we do respect our Qur'an al-Kirim tells us and teaches us that you have your religion, we have our religion, when obviously uh, people in Mecca, the enemies of Islam, they came and proposed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and obviously in Surah al kafirun they said, you know what, O Muhammad, since we cannot um, agree, what we do is that you worship our idols one year and we worship your God one year. Just to 50-50, compromise, negotiation. And, um, and if you don't want that, obviously also, we, they offered him that, you know, we'll give you whatever wealth you like, you leave your religion, or we'll give you the women, whoever women you wish to marry, we'll give you, we'll offer you. Obviously, Professor Asam, he never compromised. And then they said, okay, so if not that, then let's just do 50-50. You, you, you worship our idols and we worship your Lord, your God, you know, let's share. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam agreed, and then he said towards the end in Surah Al-Kafirun, لَكُمْ لُكُمْ You have your religion, we have our religion. It's no problem. We can have, we can have dialogues, we can have discussion, we can, have, we can talk to each other, but we obviously don't compromise when it comes to the principles of religion. But Islam is a religion of coexistence, it's a religion of of respecting one another and uh, and of course there's now also a compulsion of religion. No way you'll find the Muslim forced anybody to become Muslim because you cannot dictate the faith of people. It's very difficult. The best way and the, the way actually was the, well, the Islam was spread around the world, it was the beautiful character of the Muslims, is the truthfulness, trustworthiness and honesty of the dealing and of the transaction of the early Muslim traders, businessmen. And you know this, how Islam was spread in Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh, subcontinent, Pakistan, how Islam was spread in Africa, in those countries. It's the good character of all Muslims. And this really inspired the people of other faiths. Um, with this word, I'd like to, uh, inshallah, conclude my uh, humble uh, speech on the importance of the facts of Apple for them. So we have Q&A um, for about 5-10 minutes. Um, if you don't have any questions that you want to ask, do you have any, any comments that you want to make? Yeah. Were there any Sahaba that went to the United country? Asian subcontinent. He says that apparently some Sahaba they're buried in China. So they've, they've actually reached China. 
But I'm not exactly sure whether Sahaba are buried in Pakistan or in the subcontinent. But obviously Muslim leaders uh, like Muhammad al Qasim, uh, you know, he, he is famously Muhammad al Qasim. He's, he's reached uh, the, the, the land of Sindh. So currently known as Karachi, Sindh. Uh, that's when he reached and he spread the Masjid of Islam. But also we know in, ben, in the Bell of Bengal, uh, which is known as in Bangladesh, uh, Islam was spread by Shah Jalal, Rahimahullah. The Masjid is in the name of Shah Jalal, Rahmatullah. He was also a great uh, uh, disciple, a great saint, a wali of Allah, who traveled from Yemen to Select in order to spread uh, through Chittagong his tra uh, travel to Bangladesh in order to spread the Masjid of Islam. So different people went to different parts, but, but some historians say that there are Sahaba in, in China, Paris. So that shows the sacrifice of Sahaba in spreading the Masjid of Islam. And I remember one of the scholars uh, was saying that Dawah is the least priority as Muslims today. Yeah. It's the least, it's the last priority. It's the forgotten responsibility. And that's true. It's, the, it's, the, it's a forgotten responsibility that we don't want to do Dawah. We're happy with our own worship, our own knowledge. We seek knowledge, we worship, mashallah, but we don't want to spread the Masjid of Islam. And imagine our early Muslims generation, if they did not go out and spread the Masjid of Islam, would we be Muslims today? Imagine the amount of favors they did. And I would say it's much better to actually give faith to a person rather than doing lots of nafal ibadah. Why? Because you are saving a person and you're doing like a great favor and whatever worship the person will make, inshallah, you'll get some rewards. If you can give shahada to a person, if you can pass your Islam to another person. So I think it's, it's, it's not a, an optional, uh, uh, you know, uh, ruling when it comes to da'wah. It's, it's far off. It's, it's compulsory to get involved in some sort of da'wah. And you know all like your situation. We can do da'wah as a team, we can do da'wah as individuals, we can do da'wah as, uh, you know, in th through many different uh, methods. We can do da'wah through speeches, of course, by spreading knowledge, but also we can do da'wah through our character, our mannerism, our conduct, our behavior. Also by looking after the neighbors. You can, in the occasion, like, look the way this, this, they, this, they restrict this. Like, you can also do certain things in Ramadan, offer some food to your neighbors. He said, 40 people around you are your neighbors, consider as neighbors in Islam. And Prophet said, when like, you make food, he said to Sahaba, when you make food, like increase some soup so they can give and distribute to your neighbors. So these are the things you can do and you can use them as dawah. You can give like a small booklet on, on Islam to your friends, colleagues. You know, you, we spend like hours and, and days with novices, but we never give them anything from our faith, we don't share our faith. So I think we've become very selfish as Muslims and we have forgotten the responsibility of da'wah. And when it comes to da'wah, we prioritize other things. We prioritize our own events, own occasions, you know, the social events. And da'wah, just if there is any opportunity, we'll go ahead and join. But I think it is a must to get involved in some sort of da'wah, living in a, as a minority in this country. Any other questions? Anything that you want to say, brothers, like, you know, just participate, inshallah, feel free. Um, anything that you want to say, or any other, even general question, if you have any general question. As our scholars say, that questioning is half of the knowledge. With the, with the condition that it's not to, do argue, to, to make arguments, you know, like unnecessary arguments. Because <laughs> some questions are nowadays just for the arguments. But uh, for the, with the intention of knowledge, questions are fine. And ask questions. No, brothers? Tayyip. Yes, yes, Makes them keep the people happy, but at the same time, you're not using the word. 
Oh, good to see you. Thank you very much. And it's, it's, a, it's wonderful. It's a pleasure to see you. So you can use different, different like words and different uh, like non helpful obviously words, and you can still greet uh, without uh, compromising. So Happy New Year! So Happy New Year! Some scholars did allow, but uh, you know, as for me, if I was you know, then I would I would probably use like something different. You know, again, <clears throat> you know your position. Uh, you know, everybody knows the situation and condition. So you did accordingly. Right? And sometimes, obviously, that will take the presidency. So, for example, you have, if you have a greater intention, greater purpose, then sometimes we sacrifice some minor things. Right? But, if, but, but that has to be, you have to have the intention of, of uh, maslaha al ridiya then a greater purpose, interest. And if you have that, then some scholars say you can sacrifice certain like um, things, obviously, the, uh, with the condition that they're not um, prohibited. Is that, is that clear? Inshallah. I think we'll close here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we conclude with Dua, just to remind you, Prophet, we have this um, the first uh, Sunday of the month, so inshallah, do remember you can leave your uh, your name and your email. Uh, we will email you and remind you, inshallah. So, um, send you yeah. Yes, please, inshallah, do come and join us whenever we're having our programs. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, you know uh, we're never uh, unhappy. Whoever comes and how many people come will still continue. The most important thing is the continuation, is the perseverance. And we know, obviously, the da'wah, it's, it's not easy. It's a very hard and difficult path. And we know the stories from Quran, like Muhammad alayhi salam, he invited people for 950 years, but yet hardly anybody came. So it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, difficult path, but we still need to continue. But I hope, inshallah, you all will support us uh, and, and, and assist us time to time and be with us. The most importantly, your presence. Inshallah. Sometimes we do here, sometimes we do in Badr State Masjid, very beautiful new masjid. We do our programs over there as well at times. Um, we, we will move around uh, every now and like time to time to different venues so that different people of different community benefit. So inshallah, be with us wherever we go. Please come with us and join us. Uh, support us in every possible way with dua, with obviously. If you also can finance, there's a donation box there as well. And inshallah, you enjoy the tea and biscuits before Salat al Inshallah. Wallah, we are very sinful people. Wallah, we committed so much sins in our life. All types of sin, major, minor, knowingly, unknowingly. Wallah, we're repenting to you on this. A holy masjid and uh, oh Allah, we're repenting with this group of young people and elderly people forgive our sins O oh Allah grant us all the goodness in this world and in the next world O oh Allah you created us sent us to this world you gave us everything that we needed but we continuously ungrateful to you O oh Allah forgive our sins O oh Allah accept his efforts O oh Allah accept Al Falak Ta'ala project O oh Allah accept Shah Jalal Masjid O oh Allah accept the efforts of all the Islamic organizations and all the masjids and mosques and Islamic institutions in this country and all over the world. Oh Allah, accept uh, this effort and make this effort as a mean of our salvation, as a mean of our najat in this world and the next world. Oh Allah, oh Allah, guide us and show us the straight path. Find whole and time mankind to the straight path. Oh Allah, make us a cause of the guidance of fathers. Oh Allah, make us a cause for the guidance of other people so that we get some rewards. Oh Allah, unite the hearts of the Muslim Ummah. We're going through a very difficult and tough time. Oh Allah, raise our status, unite our hearts, and raise the status of Islam and Muslim. Oh Allah, save and protect the Muslim in this country. Oh Allah, save Muslims from Islamophobia and all this kind of hatred and hate crimes. Oh Allah, protect the Muslim communities here and protect the whole entire mankind. Establish peace and justice and harmony on this earth. صلى الله وسلم على نبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين